So you basically calculate these little uh, quantities, which are to do with something called the action. That underlies everything else. You can you can get the rest from that. So it's a simple rule. It says what's the probability a particle will move from A to B? That's it. Humanity has always looked to the stars with wonder and awe in the vast expanse of the universe where mysteries await to be unraveled. Countless telescopes have pierced the veil of darkness, revealing breathtaking celestial wonders and expanding our understanding of the cosmos. But none has come close to the mind-blowing discoveries the James Webb Telescope has made since its launch. And now, it has just made another shocking discovery that would completely shatter everything we thought we knew about the universe. Are we nothing more than players in a cosmic game? Is our entire existence a mere simulation? And what exactly is the true extent of this shocking discovery recently uncovered by James Webb? Join us on this mind-bending journey as we decipher yet another shocking discovery made by Webb, which has left the entire space industry in a state of complete shock. The James Webb Telescope has made an astonishing revelation that suggests a mind-boggling possibility. We might all be trapped in a simulation controlled by powerful machines. This groundbreaking discovery has left scientists perplexed, causing them to question the very nature of our existence. It has become increasingly challenging to distinguish between what is real and what is not. Traditionally, scientists have relied on tangible evidence to determine the truth. However, this latest revelation has thrown that approach into doubt. The empirical method, which relies on data that can be observed and measured through our senses or scientific instruments, is now being called into question. Scientists now wonder whether this tried-and-true method can help them unravel these mysteries recently uncovered by James Webb. The empirical method is rooted in a systematic process of generating and testing ideas through experiments, continually refining them based on the results obtained. This rigorous scientific method helps scientists avoid biases and errors in their reasoning, leading them to the most accurate explanations for natural phenomena. Additionally, scientists compare their findings with those of other researchers working in similar fields using a process known as peer review. This involves experts in the field evaluating and critiquing each other's work before it is published in scientific journals. This essential procedure ensures that the research presented is credible, reliable, and distinct. Moreover, scientists actively communicate their findings to the general public and policymakers. By sharing this established and proven scientific knowledge, they empower individuals and decision makers to make informed choices based on reliable information. But one thing scientists have consistently shied away from and remain cautious about is claiming absolute knowledge or definitive answers about the nature of reality. They understand that there are limits to what can be known and strive to remain humble in the face of the universe's mysteries. Scientists are well aware that their knowledge is not set in stone, but rather speculative and subject to change. They embrace the idea that their understanding will evolve as new evidence and methodologies emerge. However, they also acknowledge that there are limits to what can be studied through scientific means. Certain philosophical and ethical questions cannot be quantified or measured, and they fall outside the realm of scientific inquiry. Scientists possess a profound curiosity about the natural world, approaching it with an open mind. Yet, they balance this curiosity with critical thinking and skepticism. They scrutinize claims and evidence, seeking to uncover the truth. This approach applies not only to earthly matters, but extends to the vast expanse of the universe. They ponder the nature of reality itself, questioning if anything is truly real or if we might exist within a simulation. The concept of reality being different from what it appears to be has fascinated thinkers for centuries. As far back as 2003, renowned philosopher Nick Bostrom posited a scenario where future civilizations, equipped with immense computing power, could create countless simulations. If this is true, the likelihood of us residing within one of these simulations becomes quite high. Alternatively, if post-human societies lack the motivation or technological capability to simulate historical scenarios, then we are likely living in the genuine reality. Since Bostrom's theory gained traction, prominent figures like Elon Musk and Neil deGrasse Tyson have further popularized the notion. Even wealthy individuals from Silicon Valley have reportedly funded secret investigations to determine if we are indeed in a simulation. 
Regrettably, or perhaps fatefully, it appears there is no way for us to escape this simulated existence, at least based on our current knowledge. As far as we understand, the world we inhabit is real. Mathematicians have grappled with simulating our cosmos for years, and their efforts have been unsuccessful, reinforcing the belief in our genuine reality. Despite the compelling arguments supporting the simulation hypothesis, significant challenges exist. Firstly, it assumes the existence of a future civilization capable of creating such simulations. Additionally, it presupposes their desire to replicate humans, Earth, or even our galaxy. These assumptions are as uncertain as the presence of God in a multiverse is conceptually possible, but scientifically unverifiable. Interestingly, our existent understanding of physics, space, and time introduces additional complexities to the simulation argument. While the case for a simulated reality may seem convincing on the surface, we must acknowledge the limitations and uncertainties that arise. Technological advancements have brought us photorealistic graphics, deep fakes, and virtual reality, leaving us to anticipate even more remarkable progress in the future. Yet, it remains uncertain whether future civilizations will truly recreate scenarios from our past. Ultimately, the debate about simulation theory is heavily influenced by our current understanding of physics and the vast mysteries of space and time. Centuries ago, Isaac Newton's groundbreaking discovery of the laws of motion sent shockwaves through the philosophical community. They marveled at the magnificence of this scientific leap, comparing it to the extraordinary invention of clocks. The universe seemed to dance to an intricate rhythm on Earth and in the celestial realm. This connection became so apparent that it inspired the theologian William Paley to argue for the existence of God. He likened finding a watch amidst the blades of grass to stumbling upon evidence of a watchmaker. Just as the presence of a watch implies the existence of a skilled creator, Paley believed that observing the wonders of nature pointed to the existence of a divine architect. In every aspect of the watch's design, one could find parallels in the intricate workings of the natural world. The watch, however impressive, paled compared to nature's vast complexity. Yet, as time progressed and our understanding of the cosmos deepened, the once prevailing notion of a mechanized universe gradually lost its appeal. Today, we are confronted with the peculiarities of our reality, the mind-bending concepts of superposition, string theory, quantum physics, and the enigmatic dark matter. These discoveries have led us to question the clockwork universe hypothesis. As our knowledge expands, the idea of a simulated universe looms on the horizon, awaiting its turn to challenge our perceptions. In the future, just as the clockwork universe now seems simplistic and naive, the concept of a simulated reality will also appear childish. Scientists have dedicated countless years to unraveling the origins of the cosmos, exploring the vast expanse of space and the infinitesimally small realms of subatomic particles. They search for clues like a palimpsest, hoping to uncover the presence of the watchmaker and shed light on the mysteries of life's origin. Simultaneously, proponents of simulation theory entertain the possibility that our reality is an elaborate construct, a product of cosmic simulators. From the primordial explosion of the Big Bang to the lingering cosmic background radiation, they strive to find the most plausible explanations for the universe. Yet, compelling evidence supporting these notions of mimicry remains elusive. Instead of gazing at distant stars, our focus turns to the subatomic realm, where we seek answers. Where would we find its intricate gears if the cosmos were indeed a clock? Where would we locate the minuscule pixels that compose its fabric if it were a simulated realm? Both gears and pixels possess the quality of discreteness, characterized by their distinctness from one another. In the realm of mathematics, this separation signifies the uniqueness of each component, much like individual Lego bricks firmly attached to their base. Although a massive Lego sphere may appear flawlessly smooth from a distance, a closer inspection reveals the individual blocks that comprise it. Similarly, to the best of our understanding, the cosmos does not conform to the structured simplicity of a Lego model or a video game. People do not magically resurrect, and trains are not inhabited by hat-wearing, non-playable characters. Superficially, everything seems to function seamlessly, but video game characters are not engaged in the essential pursuit of scientific inquiry. Now imagine if the universe were like a giant pixel, but our current scientific knowledge falls short when it comes to exploring it. The scale we are familiar with, known as the Planck length, represents the smallest unit in the cosmos. 
It's the length that the universe reached after the initial 1043 seconds following the Big Bang as it rapidly expanded. Unfortunately, the Planck length is incredibly minuscule, being 15 orders of magnitude smaller than what we can currently test with the Large Hadron Collider. Even if we could measure it, it would only reveal that the universe is made up of discrete elements, but not necessarily confirm that it's a simulation. However, the nielsen nino mia theorem is another obstacle in our quest for answers. This theorem is like a no-go sign, stating that certain conditions can occur in the universe, but not in simulations. It's related to an interesting concept called chirality, which originates from the Greek word for hand. Chirality refers to the property of an object that can be distinguished from its mirror image. For example, a left hand cannot be perfectly overlaid on a right hand. This concept of chirality extends beyond hands and can be observed in various molecules. Even seemingly different fruits like oranges and lemons contain molecules called limonene that are reversed versions of each other. Mint and caraway also exhibit this mirrored relationship. Chirality becomes particularly important when it comes to molecules like carbon or medications like thalidomide, which can have drastically different effects depending on their mirrored version. The discovery of chirality can be attributed to Qin Xiang Wu, who observed the behavior of atoms in December 1956. Specifically, Wu studied radioactive cobalt-60 atoms that emit electrons as they decay into nickel-60. In both the real and mirror worlds, these electrons should decay in random directions according to their spin. However, Wu noticed something peculiar. The electrons displayed a preference for a particular direction of decay, almost as if someone from another universe was mirroring our own. These observations on a subatomic scale bring us to the intersection of simulating physics in a computer and the challenges of chirality and discretization. In the real world, if space is periodic or roughly behaves like a circle, momentum becomes discrete, comprising different individual pieces. On the other hand, in simulations where space is considered discrete, momentum behaves more like a circle. You eventually return to your starting point if you maintain enough momentum in a periodic space. To illustrate this, imagine playing Pac-Man and reaching the right-hand edge of the maze, only to find yourself back at the left-hand edge. Pac-Man consumes discrete points in the simulation as he moves along. However, if Pac-Man were a chiral particle, he would only be able to move in one direction along the width of the maze, restricting his movement. While Pac-Man expends a great deal of energy to reach the right-hand edge, all that energy seemingly vanishes upon his return. Thus, the clash between chirality and discretization arises when simulating the laws of physics on a computer. In the real world, space being periodic implies discrete momentum, while in a simulation with discrete space, momentum behaves like a circle. This unique interaction poses intriguing questions about the nature of our universe and the possibility of it being a simulation. In the realm of physics, the idea of Pac-Man defying its usual limitations and moving from right to left seems impossible. Today's simulations tackle this challenge by introducing a fascinating concept, a mirror Pac-Man. This mirrored version moves in the opposite direction, from left to right, while still maintaining the essence of the original Pac-Man. This intriguing idea can be compared to electrons within cobalt-60 atoms moving in a contrasting manner, creating a parallel to the real world. However, such electrons do not exist, making our universe as we know it genuine and unique. Nonetheless, there is a catch to all of this. Scientists do manage to mimic the cosmos, but there are certain principles in physics where the mirror universe has no impact. Forces like magnetism, electricity, gravity, and the strong nuclear force responsible for binding quarks together remain oblivious to the concept of parity. These forces operate just the same in the mirror universe, disregarding particle spin. Over the past two decades, scientists have attempted to imitate chiral particles, but ultimately, they circumvent the challenge by simulating both particle configurations and discarding one when analyzing the data. Simulation enthusiasts strive to overcome this limitation by exploring more sophisticated scenarios. It is crucial to distinguish between simulating the entire universe at the fundamental level of physics and simulating the perceptions and experiences of human beings. The latter aspect is particularly relevant to the simulation argument proposed by Bostrom. In this context, simulations may rely on procedural creation, generating only what scientists are currently observing or studying. 
Consider the ground beneath your feet. It may appear solid and unyielding, but the soil remains concealed until you delve into it. Similarly, Chiral bosons come to light only when scientists attempt to quantify them. An intriguing proposition by Neil deGrasse Tyson suggests that the speed of light serves as a limit to travel. If we were to surpass this speed, our enigmatic overseers would struggle to replicate our cosmos swiftly enough. This concept is known as the light cone. Despite its intricacies, the universe, according to Professor Berman, possesses an innate understanding. Nature seems aware of everything due to how light bends around gravitational forces, revealing its profound interconnections. As such, astronomers were astounded when they witnessed a supernova explosion, not once but four times, occurring in four distinct locations across the cosmos. However, their excitement was accompanied by a challenge posed by general relativity, throwing a wrench into the idea of a causal connection. This unexpected twist made it difficult to replicate specific sections of the universe without modeling the entire cosmic framework. Our understanding of science currently hovers somewhere between reality and the intriguing simulation hypothesis. Amidst these contemplations, a perplexing question arises. Was the Big Bang the initiation of our simulated reality, or was it merely a part of the meticulously crafted design? In simpler terms, did the creators of the simulation intentionally launch it from a singularity, allowing it to evolve according to known or assumed physical principles? Alternatively, did they painstakingly simulate the Big Bang and its subsequent events as part of their grand plan? Let's explore some possible scenarios. First, we have the idea that the simulation began with the Big Bang. This concept could be driven by the creator's pursuit of simplicity and curiosity. Perhaps the inventors or programmers aimed to develop a realistic simulation of their own universe, or a variant of it, to observe its evolution over time. Thus, they initiated the simulation from a singularity, letting it unfold based on the physical principles they were familiar with or assumed. This notion aligns with certain philosophical and theological beliefs that interpret the Big Bang as a pivotal creation event. On the other hand, we have the possibility that the simulation included the Big Bang deliberately. This scenario could be justified by the developer or programmer's desire for complexity and control. They may have sought to create a highly detailed and customized simulation of their own universe, or a different one, with the intention of studying how it would react under various conditions. They meticulously replicated the Big Bang and its aftermath as part of their design, fine-tuning certain parameters or initial conditions to generate alternative outcomes. This perspective also harmonizes with certain philosophical and religious beliefs that perceive the Big Bang as a manifestation of divine will or intelligence. Now, this is where the James Webb Space Telescope takes center stage. The JWBUST has played a crucial role in unraveling the mysteries of the Big Bang by observing the Cosmic Microwave Background, CMB. The CMB, which originated approximately 380,000 years after the Big Bang, contains invaluable information about the universe's origins, evolution, geometry, expansion rate, metacontent, and primordial fluctuations. With unmatched accuracy and sensitivity, the JWST has been meticulously examining the CMB spectrum. It has also been tirelessly searching for potential deviations from the mainstream cosmological model through its advanced mid-infrared instrument, or MIRI. The enigmatic nature of the repeated supernova explosions, intertwined with the implications of general relativity, has added a captivating twist to our understanding of the cosmos. Contemplating whether our reality began with the Big Bang or was meticulously crafted by a higher power, the simulation hypothesis sparks curiosity and poses profound questions. And as we delve into the mysteries of the universe, the James Webb Space Telescope stands as a beacon of hope, meticulously investigating the cosmic microwave background and seeking to unlock the secrets of our beginnings and beyond. But that's not all. The JWST has likewise been dedicated to exploring the mysteries of the Big Bang, specifically by studying the earliest sources of light that emerged after a prolonged period known as the Cosmic Dark Ages. These Dark Ages persisted for hundreds of millions of years following the explosive event. Still, the first stars that came into existence during this period were remarkable. They were massive yet short-lived, emitting intense ultraviolet light and producing heavy elements. Meanwhile, the initial galaxies were small and weak, harboring supermassive black holes. 
To accomplish its research goals, JWST employs advanced instruments such as the near-infrared camera and near-infrared spectrograph, which enable the detection, characterization, and measurement of distances and redshifts of these early light sources. Additionally, JWST scientists have focused on investigating the era of reionization, a significant milestone when the first light sources ionize the vast majority of hydrogen atoms in the intergalactic medium. This transformative event marked the end of the cosmic dark ages and left a distinctive imprint on the cosmic microwave background, CMB, shaping the birth and evolution of galaxies. JWS relies on instruments such as the Near Infrared Imager, Nearest, and the Slitless Spectrograph, MIRI, to delve deeper into the reionization history and its impact on cosmic structures. Additionally, JWST has been dedicated to studying the Cosmic Dawn, a period characterized by the emergence of the earliest stars and galaxies, which generated enough molecular hydrogen to cool and coalesce into more complex formations. The Cosmic Dawn symbolized the transition from a simple to a complex universe and played a crucial role in the subsequent history of star formation. JWS has been actively searching for molecular hydrogen emissions from these structures and analyzing their physical properties, utilizing instruments like NIRCAM, NIRSPEC, NIRIST, and MIRI. In addition to the investigations related to the universe's origins and evolution, a physicist named Melvin Watson from the University of Portsmouth has put forward a fascinating idea suggesting that our reality may be a computer simulation. Watson's theory is based on the fundamental concept that physical reality can be broken down into bits of information from which space-time and matter arise. He proposes that any simulation has a minimum size or resolution beyond which further subdivisions are impossible. Watson speculates that the elementary particles, the smallest components of the universe, might contain information pertaining to the simulation's programming language. According to Watson, by carefully studying the attributes of these particles, such as their mass and charge, we could potentially detect patterns or anomalies that reveal the underlying code of the simulation. He likens this process to zooming in on a computer image until individual pixels become discernible, allowing us to gain insights into its content. Watson has even developed a mathematical model that describes how the information content of elementary particles can change based on whether they are part of a simulation or not. He proposes conducting experiments using existing particle accelerators, including the Large Hadron Collider, to test his ideas. Watson argues that such experiments could distinguish between three scenarios. First, that we are not in a simulation and physical reality remains uninfluenced by information. Second, that we are living in a simulation where information solely determines physical reality. And third, that we inhabit a simulation where physical reality is influenced by information. Watson's ideas are part of a larger endeavor to examine the simulation hypothesis empirically. Other approaches involve scrutinizing physical laws for flaws, contradictions, or violations of Bell's inequalities, a set of mathematical constraints that any local realistic theory must satisfy. However, Watson's proposition stands out as it centers on the information content of elementary particles as a possible signature of a simulation. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you are still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more quality content.